Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on this channel. So, well, today in this video, we'll be talking more about the 5G, the air fiber. As uh, nowadays, we can hear a lot of uh, in and outs about the air fibers, and there is no release for the open air fiber devices in the country. And uh, only we have, we have left with two of the vendors, which is Airtel and Jio, which is providing the 5G services over the air. And, uh, Moreover, the air fiber is another technology which came up and uh, using the fiber internet connection over the air. So when uh, we opt for any of the air fiber connections, we do have two of the devices. You might have seen these devices whenever uh, we do the installation for that air fiber. So this brings me to the curiosity, like why uh, means we can access the internal device, which is there present in the vicinity which used to provide the wi-fi connection that is simply an access point which is there but the device which is situated on the top which is connecting to the base station and providing us the internet we are not able to modify those devices so this video will be talking more about those devices which is known as the ODUs, the outdoor units so i somehow i managed to uh, collect one of the physical hardware device for Geo and this is the previous version of the Geo Air Fiber ODU this is 5174 model number which you can see up I'm able to access it and I'll, I'll show you like how we can access it and what's the uh, agenda for accessing it is either we are able to do some mods inside it and we are able to configure any other providers such as Airtel or any other things and what all uh, base stations we can scan using this particular device. So let's jump into this. So first of all, like how I'm able to connect this device directly. So in a general scenario, you won't be able to directly access this OD what you need uh, is a physical connection where you will be directly plugging up a cable to the OD and directly to your PC. In my case, what I did is I used a USB to Ethernet adapter and connect it directly to my Kali machine. And here I can see I need to disable the IPv4 um, because this device communicate over IPv6 and there is a RADVD daemon which is running and providing the uh, mains the IPv6 connection and the gateway. So we'll be talking more about that in the later stage. And uh, you can see like I'm able to access uh, this device using the IPv6 address. Okay, and then let's take a look on the audio interface. So this is the audio interface. It didn't sync up the time and all, so don't worry about it. As you can see, like this is the device status, the very first page which you will be seeing up. You will be uh, provided with the past means username and password and uh, that you can reset in the initial state. Then you will be able to access this audio device. So in the first, uh, you will be seeing just the device status, um, hiding few details. And then moving ahead, you will be seeing up the network status where you will notice like we have the IPv6 status, V4 status and the connection status, which is detached. That right. means like it's not connected to any of the access point, uh, which is set up inside our premises. So if you notice like the mode of communication of this is EOGRE, which is basically nothing just an encapsulation tunnel, which is which it used to build to directly to the ISP so that there is a transparency from the access point directly to the ISP. So it's it's a basically a protocol which uh, is like Ethernet over generic routing encapsulation. It's a layer two tunneling protocol and uh, which used to encapsulate the entire Ethernet packet through the GRE tunnel access point, which is uh, it means which is sitting inside your premises, will directly establish a EOGRE tunnel with the service gateway, which is there in the ISP end, and uh, there will be a transparency of the traffic from the STAs or the endpoint to the wireless service gateway through this EOGRE protocol. So I didn't try to set up the lab for this, but yeah. If you want to read more about this, I've provided some of the links to the white paper. 
and uh, you can go through with that okay now moving further we have certain additional features to this as you can see like it it will be supporting the n78 5g band and uh, on which it will be communicating with the base station moving ahead to the cellular status and the utilization status you can see like we just have a uh, few of the things over here like uh, system monitoring cpu utilization basically the hardware utilization then moving ahead to the cellular setting we are given with the APN name that is GeoNet which is by default and supporting both IPv4 and V6 and again it's communicating over the band and we do have an uh, enablement to select particular band which we need to communicate so that's pretty much interesting I don't know about the new devices but the one which I have is supporting that then we have certain interesting stuff uh, which you can see like we have uh, the Bluetooth setting I don't know for, for what reason they have given we do have the eSIM profile which we can delete by default profile which is set it up during the time of installation and then we we can even install our own easy i tried but it's again a failure but yeah i'll be trying more and then and one more thing there is a physical sim slot by default it's disabled or locked i didn't check up on the hardware part if you if you guys have any idea upon uh this particular eSIM or any understanding about the eSIM architecture please do let me know in the comments to unlock this using any any other eSIM yeah you can see like we do have uh the functionality enabled to delete and add a new sim and the maximum limit is three eSIM we can add so yeah definitely we'll be trying up that as a told like if you guys have any idea on this just let me know over the comment and moving ahead to the land settings we do have eogre itself selected by default and but whereas we do have different LAN settings over here. We can use it as a router, we can use it as a bridge. EOGRE, which is by default, I'm cautious about switching the modes because I don't want to lose the access, to be very honest. First, I need to find out in the hardware where is the reset button so that I can get the default configuration back and I'll be able to access that. What else we have in this? We have a IPv4 setting, which is common in most of the network devices. And the interesting stuff which I found is they are running a pretty much open source demo, RADVD. This is a router advertisement demo and it's open source. I'll provide you the link in the description and uh, it implements a local layer advertisement of IPv6 router addresses and IPv6 routing prefix using the neighbor discovery protocol. So yeah, this is a uh, open source demo which is running in this. So, and the next interesting stuff is there is the EOGRE protocol configuration. So as you can see, like the remote endpoint, which we can see that is basically an IPv6 address and uh, along with the uh, VLAN tags because it's a tunnel any which ways and the traffic will be tagged and uh, these are the VLAN IDs which is given so I haven't uh, tried to dig deeper into this but yeah uh, to set up this is a very much complex to set up uh, the interceptor traffic between uh, the ODU and our access point so this is how uh, the entire uh, thing is working in, inside the audio of uh, air fiber. Yeah, that's all for this video and I hope uh, you find this helpful. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment and don't forget to like, share and subscribe because that's our compensation for making this video efforts and bring you the tech insights and the tutorials. So thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.